the destruction stopped literally at my door. I honestly believe my parents in heaven said to God, it's not his time yet. Devastating scene near Miami. The catastrophic condominium collapse in Surfside, Florida. The scope of the disaster is overwhelming, with fears the rest of the beachside building may come down too. So many people are still unaccounted for after a high-rise condo collapsed in Florida. Like many other survivors of the Surfside condo collapse, Steve Rosenthal is grateful that he made it out alive, but he's worried about what comes next. I've lost everything. I mean, just everything. I mean, you know, just think if you lived in a place for 20 years, I remember times I'd open up a drawer and I'd go, wow, that's where that is. So pretty much the shirt on my back and my shoes, and uh, that's pretty much what I have. Champlain Towers was a place where everyone, like, it was like a community of its own. People had lived there for anywhere from, you know, 30, 20 years, 10 years. Everybody knew everybody. And it's really hard when you're living in a place for that amount of time and you have that kind of stability to all of a sudden be in a hotel room, not knowing, you know, where you're going to go next. Michael Capone is the founding CEO of Global Empowerment Mission a Miami-based nonprofit that provides relief during international disasters. After the condo collapse, Jem turned its attention to its own backyard, helping survivors with gift cards, everyday goods, and short-term housing. It's the, the complete unknown, you know? It's just imagine your entire apartment has completely vanished, everything you had, and then, you know, you can't work right now because of the situation. Many of them are are elderly and they were retired. They had probably calculated, right, in their next amount of years what they would have to live for and they never thought for a million years that they'd have to, you know, start all over again. If I got to start going at my age into my IRA, you know, and start taking out a, a, a chunk other than the minimum distribution, I'm in trouble. That may last for, you know, my name's Rosenthal. It's not Rockefeller or Rothschild. It's a big difference. I wasn't planning on using that money till I was 80. While thousands of dollars in gift cards and hotel bills have been paid out, displaced residents say they're afraid of what will happen in the long term. There's hope that insurance money and lawsuits can help cover some losses, but the timing remains uncertain. Until I know, like I said, the first question a realtor asks is how much can you afford? Until I know what my financial situation is, I'm in limbo. The W Hotel has stepped up and, you know, friends of mine and um, they've given me 60 days to stay there. But after that, I gotta find a place. Everybody's in the same position. I mean, you know, like I said, we're not the Rockefellers. We need the insurance money. Uh, short term to medium term, uh, there are Mike, the Michael Capones of the world are getting, you know, 30, 60 day housing for people at different complexes. Um, but, you know, when that's over, you know, and it's going to be over, you know, 60 days goes by like that, and, and we're all worried, you know, no, no question about it. I don't know anybody that's like uh, not worried about the future. Jem is working to provide long-term solutions for Champlain Tower evacuees, including at least a year's worth of rent. But for so many survivors, the loss of their home also goes beyond the financial. I know a lot of the people. I mean, you know, I lived there 20 years, we had a gym, you know, we, some of us worked out together, we hung at the pool together, we walked, we had a walk trail, there was a bike trail out there, you know, there were friends and neighbors. This is my home, this is where I grew up, this, there's friends of mine that like lived in the building, so it's obvious that I'm going to be here for the long haul. We have to get them in their apartment and just guide them and be there for them every step of the way.